The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Transnet Port Terminals has injected some 14 billion rand into the development of the purpose-built Ngura Container Terminal in the Eastern Cape. Natalie Grieve travelled to the Kucha Special Economic Zone to find out more. Improvements to the container terminal, which had strategic linkages with terminals in Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, Richards Bay and Durban, while servicing traffic from the East, South America and West African markets, had already taken its net yearly operating capacity from 800,000 20-foot equivalent units, or TEUs, to 1.5 million TEUs. Up to 60% of the terminal's cargo comprised transshipment products, while 40% were import or export products. During a recent visit to the port to officially open two new shipping berths, Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown lauded the delivery of new port infrastructure, telling stakeholders that the move marked a significant step in Transnet's efforts to expand the port's capacity and position the terminal as a regional transshipment hub. This is a significant milestone that Transnet has achieved in its drive to develop the port into a transshipment hub in the southern hemisphere. This achievement will certainly increase the chances of South Africa to improve its competitiveness, especially in relation to other ports in the on the continent, which are in direct competition with South Africa for the movement of freight in the global markets. It will also contribute greatly to the integration of our country with the rest of the region and the continent. The terminal's second phase expansion was meanwhile progressing to plan, with two additional ship-to-shore cranes and 18 rubber-tired gantries with supporting trailers now commissioned. TPT ultimately aimed to boost the terminal's yearly handling capacity to 2.2 million TEUs, allowing it to leverage its proximity to the Kucha Special Economic Zone and providing further opportunities for back-of-port operations. Brown added that recent investment ticked crucial boxes in government's developmental agenda while boosting the Eastern Cape's role in the broader economy. One can rightly say what the port has meant to the people of the Eastern Cape. I am pleased that the, report, the port has contributed towards job creation in the area of the Eastern Cape. To date, more than 825 permanent jobs have been created since the oper operationalization of the port in October 2009, the creating of decent jobs remain a very high priority for this government. The port has also contributed towards the transformation of the economy. To date, the port's procurement spend is recorded at 900 million rand, of which 740 million is broad-based black economic empowerment spend. Transnet CEO Brian Molefe meanwhile outlined further plans to invest 30.1 billion rand in its various operations in the Eastern Cape over the next seven years, which formed part of its larger strategy to increase the country's container terminal capacity by 70.8% to 7.35 million TEUs. In terms of the market demand strategy, I mean, this investment here was about 12 billion over the last uh, three years. Uh, total investment in the Eastern Cape will be about 30 billion, rail and ports, and um, the total investments in ports over the market demand strategy period is about 90 billion. You will know, remember that uh, 201 billion, 210 10 billion goes to the rain and uh, the rest is for ports. As surface tailings gold miner DRD Gold steadily recovers from the failure of new technology, CEO Neil Pretorius is determined to continue pioneering new technologies relevant to its operations. Natasha Wurdendahl has more. Despite suffering a major technological setback at the Ergo plant in Brackpan that had sent gold output plunging along with investor confidence, DRD Gold aims to research, develop and experiment with new technologies that would enable cost and production efficiencies in a high cash cost business and all-round tough industry. 
CEO Neil Pretorius tells Mining Weekly Online that the company would be relentless in its commitment to rolling out new technologies until it works and works well enough to extract the 11 million ounces of resources at the group's fingertips. We want to mine our entire 11 million ounces. And the only way that we'll be able to do that is if we can continue to develop better technologies. With the fine grind where it currently is, the flotation and fine grind, we can achieve about a 50 to 52% extraction efficiency. That's about half the gold that enters the plant still leaves the plant. If we can improve that by the same amount, 0.03 gram a tonne, it adds 12 million rand to the bottom line on a monthly basis, considering obviously uh, that there would be a cost involved. So we will, without a doubt, be dedicating uh, more capital and obtaining more resources uh, in order to assist us in achieving that technology improvement, the research and development side of that. There will be new technologies in two or three years from now maybe because we'll be working on that and we'll roll them out and then maybe there'll be another hiccup and maybe the shareholders will again take flight. That's the nature of our business. It's a trial and error kind of business. If we don't do it, we'll be, we'll be gone. We'll disappear in three years from now. If we do it and we do it successfully, we might be around in 30 years from now. So we are relentlessly committed to R&D and we are relentlessly committed towards rolling it out, implementing it, and sticking with it until it works and works well enough. Because if we don't, there's no business. We're not here to just mine half the ore body. And ours is very much the focus on see if we can mine the entire thing. And that will require new technology. So it is, it is not, it's not impossible or uh, improbable even that we might have repeats of, of what we saw last year. Obviously, every experience, especially a bad experience, is one that you, sh you should learn from and you should try not to make the same mistakes again. But uh, it's not going to put us off from trying new technologies again. Because once it works, you know, the upside is phenomenal. Other news making headlines this week, the Department of Tourism focuses on rolling out renewable energy. To improve the sustainability of tourism in South Africa, the Department of Tourism has included the retrofitting of key tourist attractions and state-owned destinations with renewable energy technology in the pilot phase of a 600 million rand tourism incentive program. So the, the, the shift towards um, uh, solar energy provision, it, it makes technological sense. The package would be the actual technology, the installation cost, uh, and the battery pack that goes along with it, the storage. So it could be that in a few years from now, uh, the, the, um, the situation has changed so significantly that you won't need to incentivize the retrofitting for energy efficiency because the electricity bills are so high and the cost of, of, of uh, solar technology has gone so low that it, it, it's, an, it's an obvious choice. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.